files from New York, this small flat in Germany became the headquarters of a terror cell responsible for killing over 3,000 people in America. It was home to a man for whom life promised great opportunities. But he had a dark side, which drew him to Bin Laden's message of hate. Mohammed Atta became the commander of the cell. The striking feature were his eyes. They were immovable. They were extremely cold. I could sense this, this sort of frustration and enrage. He got really upset and, and extreme in his judgments when it, when it came to, to politics. Others were brought here in the name of Islam to plan the terror atrocities of September the 11th. They harmed their religion, their countries, their people so much. For three months over three continents, we've investigated the terror cell to find out who they really were. To discover, too, why they went undetected for three years while they planned their attack on America. Several of these people had been tracked uh, by intelligence until they got inside the United States, and then they were lost in our own country. This is the story of how they plotted to fly four planes into some of America's most symbolic buildings, the moment the terrorists called the Zero Hour. The man who was to fly the first hijacked plane into the North Tower of the World Trade Center arrived in the city of Hamburg in Germany in 1992. Mohammed Atta came from Egypt to study town planning. He enrolled at a technical university in an industrial suburb. From the beginning, the serious young man impressed and intrigued the professor who taught him. He was not like young students, looking, laughing. I was rather interested in his development. He was polite. He was somewhat reserved. He was very intelligent in discussing and argumenting. And the special thing, he was very, very religious. Shortly after his arrival, Mohammed Atta already a qualified architect, took a part-time job in this design company. He used his family name, El Amir. The new recruit prayed five times a day. His devotion raised little comment in the office at the time. Other people will go outside five minutes for smoking, and uh, Mohammed had, uh, had five minutes time for praying. Why not? Other students on his course saw Mohammed Atta as a man focused only on his town planning studies. He had no time for pleasure. He was not interested in cars and I think he was not really interested in, in girls like uh, Western young men are. <laughs> he was uh, a serious and calm person but when he got upset about something he was becoming passionate. That passion would be recognized and used by Islamic extremists, whose message appealed to another dark side in Atta. The influence may be from others that pressed out the dark part of his being. Atta's religion was his driving principle. It became a force not for good, but for evil within him. He went to pray, and this gave him force to be what he was, to be two people. <laughs> Mohammed Atta was born and raised in Egypt, 
a country where anger and resentment have long simmered beneath the surface. There is widespread anger against a ruling elite seen as corrupt and undemocratic. Anger, too, against America, which has both supported Egypt's government and proved Israel's strongest ally. This was the environment Mohammed Atta grew up in, the city to which he brought two German friends when he returned to Egypt on a study trip in 1995. This was the place where he felt he belonged. He was very much an Egyptian. Uh, the German world, the European world, was a strange world for him. Mohammed Atta and his friends from the university were here on an urban aid project to redevelop Cairo's old quarter. The Germans found that Atta held strong political views. He was critical of corruption in his own government and its close relationship with America, which he felt was against any Muslim cause. These politics were, uh, were always in the interest, actually, of the US. And uh, he was very critical of that, actually. I could sense this, this sort of frustration and enrage, especially about uh, what was going on in the world and the biased politics against Muslims, as he was, would have regarded it. Atta's rage and frustration were fueled by a government crackdown on Islamic extremists at that time following a wave of terror attacks. Hundreds were imprisoned. There were accusations of torture, unfair trials. Mohammed Atta was afraid. With his political views, he would be arrested if he returned to live here. Mohammed gave the impression of being sad and some kind of being depressive about his individual perspective and about the political situation because he didn't know how to remain in Egypt without being criminalized, because he wanted to live in Egypt. Mohammed Atta had grown up as the only boy in a traditional Muslim family. His father, a successful lawyer, dominated the child with his forceful personality. He has no friends. He's a loner. He's like me. Mohammed Atta's mother doted on her son, who was considered a sensitive boy. He felt himself in the shadow of his two older sisters, both successful graduates. Friends saw him as soft and immature. Mohammed, I remember him completely in a form of child. He has a child, child feelings, uh, innocent, uh, virgin. The future hijacker was a carefree student when he received his first degree from Cairo University. His friends never considered him a natural leader. Really, he is a very delicate person. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to cry about him. <laughs> he, he was a very nice person, really. But Mohammed Atta's father had sympathies with a militant Islamic organization opposed to the government. This was the political background against which his son grew up. The father's views haven't changed to this day. The pulse of the Arab streets say that America is a filthy thug. America is a filthy thug who wants to hit the Islamic nations. The frustrations of Atta's father and millions of Muslims found a voice in the remote mountains of Afghanistan. Osama bin Laden was becoming a real force in 1995. His message, America must withdraw its troops from Saudi Arabia. He'd been a key figure behind an earlier attempt to destroy the World Trade Center. Investigators made an intriguing discovery. A member of his terror group, a pilot, had talked of smashing his plane into the CIA headquarters. Mohammed Atta returned to Hamburg in 1996 after his study trip. He found himself in a very different and alien environment. 